Again, the state of Florida is attempting to tamper with the vote. This is happening in several states where right-wing power is threatened by Hispanic, black, poor, and independent voters. The latest attack on voting rights in Florida comes in the form of a letter sent out to counties where there are a concentration of ethnic, poverty-stricken, and independent voters. The letter allegedly targets illegal voting by non-Americans. Similar to the same techniques used by the infamous Senator McCarthy, the letter begins with an accusation that does not require factual evidence to warrant the assumption of guilt. The fact that only months before the most important election ever facing this nation, the state has targeted thousands of legitimate voters with an accusation that gives them 30 days to meet a, at a hearing with the Board of Elections, where they must prove their citizenship. Over 180,000 Florida voters received the letter that begins with this statement. The County of Supervisor of Elections has received information from the state of Florida that you are not a United States citizen. However, you are registered to vote. That's the accusation. In most cases, it's a false accusation and should be considered an illegal act subject to sanctions as well. Thousands of legitimate voting citizens, veterans, war heroes, Hispanic Americans, Black Americans, and senior Americans in Florida have been shocked by this reckless use of political power. This attempt to purge voters of their rights must be exposed for what it is. It is the mark of totalitarianism, the failure of a nation to respect the equal rights of all its citizens. Governor Scott and the Republican right wing in Florida has chosen an extremely small group of illegal citizens to scapegoat in order to challenge the rights of thousands of law-abiding Americans. Laced with bigotry, this act of cunning is the process by which despotism and tyranny destroy nations and ruin innocent lives. Florida was the state that forced George Bush Jr. to be appointed to the presidency by a court that was comprised of judges hand-picked by his father. In the election of 2000, George Walker Bush Jr. was not elected. He was picked by the Supreme Court. The rule of law continues to disappear in this nation, and it must be addressed before we face hardships, even worse than the trials of economic hard times. Often it is asked by the people in countries where dictatorships flourish, how did this happen to us? It happens because too many people remain silent too long. This is Spade Caller.